Now the drivetrain. The first decision, which is going to be very controversial, I didn't go with mechanical shifting. I went with electronic shifting. Uh, I mentioned in the tech video that the signals come from here down to a receiver down here, and a motor does the shifting. There is no cable running through here. I didn't want to have to carry cables. I didn't want cables stretching and requiring adjustment. And I've been so happy with SRAM ETAP technology that I decided to go with it on the trip. I'm going to be carrying extra batteries. It's proven to be very dependable. I think at least as dependable as mechanical shifting. So I'm going with electronic shifting. And a lot of people have said I'm crazy for that. I'm very comfortable with the decision. Uh, Michael's going to be going with mechanical shifting. And he's the expert. We'll see. So electronic shifting, ETAP by SRAM. I'm really happy with that decision. The next decision, which is something that I've been going back and, no, not back and forth. I'm going back and back and back, is the gearing to have. I want to be able to carry a heavy load across the Rocky Mountains. And that means I've got to have a very low gear. I'm not at all concerned about speed. I'm not in a hurry. This trip will take as long as it takes. but I want to be able to ride up some really, really steep hills. Now, there comes a time when you need to get off and walk your bike. If you're going up such a steep hill, especially there's a place called the Paw Paw Tunnel on the CNO Canal where you have to go around this tunnel because it's under construction now. And everybody I see doing that is pushing their bike up the side of this mountain. Okay, I'm not going to be able to ride my bike up there. But aside from a few things like that, I want to be able to pedal up just about any hill. So this tiny gearing in the front and this big boy in the back will basically allow me to climb a tree. I'll only be going like four miles an hour, five miles an hour, but I can keep pedaling. And it might take me a few days to climb a certain mountain in Wyoming, but that's okay. Now, when I shift all the way down to the smallest gears down here, I can still cruise along at 20 miles an hour comfortably. And if I'm just coasting down a steep hill, I might be going 25, but that's as fast as I need to go. I've got friends that love to go 40 or 50 miles an hour on their bicycle. That scares me. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And again, I'm not in a hurry. So that was the decision. And I, oh, I said I've gone back and back. I've replaced this once. I've replaced this twice as I've been trying to get just the right gearing to be able to do what I want to be able to do. And every time I do, I go out and ride around Hendersonville here up different steepnesses of hills. And I think I'm right now where I want to be. Now, once I'm through the Rockies, I might decide that I want a little bit more top end. And if I do, I'll go to a bike shop and I'll replace this with a slightly bigger gear. Um, that's okay. That's something I can do. This is a 10 spokes on the inside, 52 we ended up, 50, 52 teeth on the inside. 10, 52, and up front, this guy is 34. And I might go to a bigger, more teeth up here if I decide I want more speed once I'm through the Rockies. We'll see. The chain is a SRAM force. Oh, no, I got rid of the force. This is a rival chain by SRAM. I've been replacing a few parts as I've learned things. Um, now, this derailleur, that's the thing that actually uses the motor to change the gears. The battery is a SRAM ETAP, obviously. Um, the shifters are SRAM ETAP. Access HDR hydraulic caliper again, no, no wires anywhere on this bike. The braking is not done with a wire pulling on those old fashioned calipers that you would normally have squeezing on your rim. These are disc brakes, and the line that's going from these down to those brakes is a hydraulic line, not a piece of cable pulling something up. Hydraulic brakes shouldn't have any trouble with those. I'm carrying extra brake pads with me. The one thing I'm a little bit worried about is coming out of Wyoming, it's going to be a long downhill for a few days. And I wish I could get bigger discs, but this frame just won't accept anything bigger than 160 millimeter discs. I'd love to have at least 180s on this, but I think I'll be fine. I'm just going to take it easy. I'm not in a hurry. Have I mentioned that before? Uh, extra shifters up here. I mentioned the blips, the little shifters that I can just touch if I'm in that position instead of that position. Um, Brake rotors are SRAM, centerline disc brakes. Okay, my pedals, these just came out this year. These are Shimano's latest. I really like these because on this side, I can use a regular shoe, 
stand here and pedal away. So if I'm going through town or something and I don't want to be clipped in, I can be wearing my sandals, whatever, and just use these like a beach bike. But then if I'm really traveling, I go over here and I clip my cleats in here and they're connected so I can pull as well as push. I've got a much firmer foot. So these clip, these pedals rather, regular shoes clipped in. These aren't part of the bike, but they're kind of part of the deal as long as we're talking about shoes. These are Shimano, again, Japanese, England, America, Germany, Japan, more to come. Um, these just came out this year as well. I think these are EX7. Yes, EX7 cycling shoes, men's. And they've got a really comfortable, I can walk around in a grocery store in these. They don't clacker or anything the way my road, my road shoes do. But recessed are the clips here that attach to this side of the pedal. So I can be pedaling comfortably around town on this side with these shoes or my sandals, or I can clip in these attach to that with these Shimano E7, just came out this year. Okay, so that's it for the basic bike.